thank you. Thank you very much for that slightly alarming introduction. <laughs> um, and thank you. Can you all hear me okay? So fine at the back. I'm wired up. Is that okay? Is it at the back? I'm okay. Right. Um, yes, thank you very much. And thank you for uh, the invitation to be involved in this amazing event. My role as principal assessor with the SQA involves the leading the development, the ongoing development and the implementation of hire. It's hire specifically, although I do work with the National Five people as well sometimes. So it might be a wee bit sort of hire ba biased um, presentation I'm going to do. Um, I'm not here as a representative of the SQ, I'm not here as an official capacity, although I do have their, you know, their, their okay to be here, um, as it were. And uh, the other thing is, I'm not a principal teacher, as it says on the, uh, on, the, on the blurb about the today. I do have a principal teacher at my school who's very nice, but it's not me. So just to, just to come, I'm, I'm just a regular teacher. Um, OK, the, um, I've been asked to talk about the crossover texts, which is one aspect of the Scottish textual analysis, which is one aspect of critical reading in the new uh, qualifications in National 5 and in higher. And... Um, the, that, that's, quite, that's quite a specific, specific element. I'll pro, I'm going to start off with putting it in a kind of wider context of the critical reading and the Scottish textual analysis in general. But please, if you have any questions about any aspects of this, there may not be time this morning, some, this afternoon, because I'm very conscious of time. I know that you've got, you've got there's, some, there's some treats to come this afternoon, so I don't want to, uh, I'm not going to, you know, sort of overrun, a, a, I'm very conscious of the time element. But um, you should have a copy of the handout and this has my email address. Has everybody got one of these? No, no, anybody else? Say now if you... Can I give some? Okay. Well, I'll pass them, has everybody... Well, just pass them round, yeah? Is that okay to pass them back? There's okay, here's a few more. Here's a few more. Right. Here. right. Um, So this has got my email address on it, and if you have, it's my, it's my home email address, it's not a work one. If you have any questions about either what I'm going to say today, or any other aspects of the critical reading paper, or indeed other aspects of the hire, if you like, you know, please get in touch with me, and if I can answer them, I will, and if I can't answer them, I can perhaps point in the direction of someone who can. So please do do, do that, um, if, you, if you've got anything you want to ask me. What I don't know is, I don't know what your experience of this is. So there may be people here, well, there will be people who have maybe presented National 5 and the new hire. There'll be people who haven't have done one or the other or are doing one or the other. Or maybe your school hasn't done, in, hasn't done it at all yet. So um, apologies in advance if I say something you already know. And also apologies if I don't say something you would quite like me to say because it's not really explained. But again, please get in touch and ask me or ask me today if there's time um, to clarify anything. Also, apologies in advance if my voice gives up. I'm, I'm, I'm having a bit of a problem with my, with my voice at the moment. Um, so I will try to, try to get through it without coughing too much. Uh, so, okay. The... Right. The critical reading, the organisation of the critical reading paper, specifically the introduction of compulsory Scottish literature, is the biggest change that has come in the new qualifications. It's the, both because, because of the you know, introduction of new content, which is compulsory, uh, but also uh, because it now means that critical reading or literature is now at the centre of the qualifications. It's worth more, it's more significant percentage-wise than any other component. It's 40%. So close reading and the folio, the writing folio, both were 30. But right at the heart of things, we have literature, which is now kind of, if you like, sort of dominating the course. Now, um, personally, I think this is great. I mean, as I say, this is a personal personal. Um, uh, feelings about it. I think this is really good. I think it, for a start it reflects what we spend a lot of time on in the classroom. Uh, it also reflects perhaps what we as teachers and a lot of the pupils really enjoy about English is the, is the teaching, you know, is, is um, learning about literature. And also I would say um, going beyond, you know, as an enriching experience is an enjoyable experience, but also going beyond even preparing for an examination. If we're trying as, as, as teachers to kind of develop teenagers into, into decent human beings, I mean, I know they kind of are anyway, but you know what I mean, to, to turning people into, turning them into people who can be, really take a full and, 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 and good, you know, and worthwhile part in society, then what better way than to develop their empathetic awareness, to, to, to allow them to kind of look beyond their own worlds into other people's experiences through the experience of fantastic literature, and also to be amazed at the skill of the writers who are, who are presented as part of the, the higher part of the National Five course. Um, so uh, you know, I feel this has been a really good 
development. And the, the, the aim of the, the changes, I suppose, the development of these new qualifications has been to maintain the rigour of what already is there, you know, what was there, you know, in terms of either well, standard grade or intermediate or the higher that, what, that existed already. I think, I mean, all these qualifications are very well respected. I, I think, you know, in particular, maybe higher English had a, has had a, a sort of a name for being a sort of certain standard that people were very aware of, very, um, you know, very respectful, very appreciative of. So the aim is to maintain that rigour, but at the same time to enhance it with perhaps a, a, a rich range of skills coming from Curriculum for Excellence, coming from the kind of approaches, the philosophy of Curriculum for Excellence. Um, there were some of the things like, you know, perhaps the more choice, personalisation and choice, the idea of um, independent investigative activities, comparing, contrasting, big sort of reading activities. So things like the final question, the 10 mark question at higher in the Scottish text, the eight mark question in National 5, that one. So we've got quite a lot. They've got to do quite a lot independently there. They've got to use their retrieval of, in, of information from other texts or from a wider text. They've got to compare it. They've got to produce something which kind of hangs together, not necessarily in terms of sentences that you know make a paragraph, but which have, have, have got links and so on. So it's quite a challenging thing to do. Um, and I think this is, and it's also something they've done extremely well. That's what I, I want to go on and talk about that a bit later, about how well people have done, how well young people have done with the, particularly the Scottish text, it is the area of National 5 and higher where pupils have performed best, both this year and last year. So, you know, a, a real success story. And I think there's lots of reasons for that, which I'll maybe go on and talk about in a little bit. Um, the compulsory Scottish text element. So this is, I know this was kind of controversial initially, um, I think there's various reasons for that. I mean, some people felt, some people were quite enthusiastic about it from the start. Um, there were people who had concerns. Um, I think that for a start off, English teachers, we're, we're very lucky that we enjoy quite a high level of autonomy in teaching our subject. Lots of other parts of the world, lots of other parts of the UK and uh, other subject areas don't have the choice that we have in terms of deciding what we're going to teach our pupils. In, 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 you know, in a lot of schools, anyway, in many schools. And I think being told what we've got to do is not something that English teachers quite like that much. You know, we like to make our own decisions. So perhaps there's a bit of that. I think there was genuine concern. People were a bit worried about what they perceived might be the narrowing down of our choices as teachers if we were, you know, being <laughs> obliged to teach something which was came off a list. We had to pick something off that list. Um, you know, people would be saying things like, I've heard people say to me, you know, well, we're not going to get, get to teach Shakespeare anymore. You know, what will happen? And I think my perception from talking to people is that those fears have been to a great extent allayed really because it hasn't really worked out like that in fact. There are lots of choices on the list. There are many, many texts. There's 14 in the higher, there's 10 in National 5. Obviously four of these are, are crossovers which I'll talk about. Um, but there are, there's a rich range to choose from and of course for the critical essay you know anything goes and I, I do obviously do a bit of marking but I also see a lot of marking because I do lots of checking and so on and the range of text used for critical essays is, is very, very wide and all the old favourites are still in there. So clearly it hasn't been the case that people have felt restricted in what they can teach, I don't think. In terms of the choices of the texts um, on the SQA list, the, you've, got a, you've got quite a rich range. Well, you've got a rich range of genres. You've got a mixture of male, female writers. You've got what might be called maybe more traditional writers or texts and maybe and more modern ones. Um, you've got a range of geographical locations within Scotland that the writers come from. And also perhaps things that maybe teachers are very used to teaching and ones that are maybe more new that people are not so familiar with. So there is really rich pickings to, to, to dip into to decide what you want to, to teach there. The other thing about the Scottish textual element is that it has introduced a degree of predictability about the exam. There's absolutely no doubt about that. What you teach your, your class uh, for the, the Scottish textual analysis will come up in the exam. And I think that's been quite welcome, really. You know, that, that frisson of excitement in the morning of the higher or the, national, or the intermediate, whatever exam, opening up the paper and going, oh, no, there's absolutely nothing that my class can write about. Well, perhaps we've never quite experienced that. But, you know, that kind of feeling of uncertainty. But now we know for definite, if you have taught your class, Caroline Duffy, one of those six poems is definitely coming up. 
Okay? If you have taught your class Sunset Song, there will definitely be a, a question on Sunset Song worth 20% in the exam. So that, I think, is, you know, given that it's a new qualification, I think that predictability has, has been very welcome. It looks like, you know, it has been, has been received well. Um, the other thing, I mean, in terms of the, what people choose to, to, to focus on, uh, ideally, the idea is that teachers, teachers will choose something they love, that they love teaching, and they can communicate that with, to their pupils. Um, what I would say right away in terms of the, what, from Mark, as Mark has reports, obviously I, I see a lot of these, and also anecdotally from talking to people at events such as this, is that not only have Mark has felt that the pupils know their text really well, I mean, so well, the teacher, teachers have been flinging everything at this, this, this element and they are very, very learned and very, very able to make analytical comments and to make observations and general comments about what they've learned. But also, they are very enthusiastic. The enthusiasm for what they have been studying in terms of the, the, um, the Scottish textual analysis element is very clear. It's clear sometimes explicitly. And it's, in, it's clear implicitly in the kind of comments that they've been making. So I think that's wonderful. I think if, if we've got you know, young people growing up and they are getting a chance, where, because nearly everybody in Scotland does either National 5 or higher or both English. But nearly everyone, not everyone, but most people do one or other of these things if they are at school and if they're studying on to that level. To see them enthusiastic about it, to see them loving the stuff they're doing and making comments about it, which shows that they have grown as people through studying this, I think, just, I think that's just a great thing, a great achievement. And I think the reason it's happened is because teachers have done it so well. They've, they've, they've been so conscientious and thorough and helped their classes to attain that kind of high level of expertise and given them the opportunity to develop them to, you know, to be enthusiastic about it. So I think that, you know, that we should all be very, very pleased with ourselves about it. We should, there's something to celebrate, I think, how this has done, how this has gone. Um, it might be the case that, you know, I'm saying ideally people would choose something that they love and that they're able to, that they know well. It might be the case that departments do, you know, something like they, everyone does the same text. That, if that suits them, that's obviously fine as well. That's, you know, that's whatever suits really, whatever is best for you and for your department and for your pupils. Um, another question is, how many texts to study from the list? Now, obviously everybody has one. I've, I've seen a lot of evidence to suggest that people are doing more than one, or a number of people are doing more than one. So what I mean by that is that the essay is also written on one of the Scottish texts from the Scottish text list. Now, there's the, it really doesn't matter. There, there is no, there's no wrong way to do this. It, what, it depends on what suits your class, what suits your pupils, really. Um, if you are feeling, you know, if you if you are feel that you you want to give them that. That choice, I suppose, uh, in, in terms of their Scottish textual analysis element of the paper, then they can, you can do two. Of course, the only thing is then they have to be able to, to have time to make that choice. So they have to be able to, um, you know, either on the day of the exam or beforehand, go in with a kind of a kind of plan. Uh, in fact, I sort of by default ended up doing this last year with my higher class. I uh, I did Sunset Song. I do Sunset Song every opportunity I get. So we'd done Sunset Song post prelim. I decided we had time because we already done our play. We'd done the Glass Menagerie as our play. Post prelim, I decided, I, I wondered whether some of them had found Sunset Song quite hard, you know, quite challenging. And I decided to give them a go at um, the Porch of Norman McCaig as well, because some of them had taught, had studied him as na for National Five. They were familiar. And it was quite easy to get groups together, working in groups where some people were already felt they were kind of reasonably expert and, and others were new. And they lapped it up. They loved it. They loved the poetry. So we kind of ended up with, with two options for the textual analysis. And obviously, whatever they didn't use that, including their play, they could do for their critical essay. On the day, I would say about two thirds of the class wrote on Sunset Song and one third of the class chose McCaig. So they did exercise a kind of you know, sensible choice on that. Um, and they all, you know, they all passed and uh, some of them did pretty well. So it was, you know, that, that worked for me, but that worked for that particular class. You would, you'd want to look at what is going to work for your group. And if you're new to doing this, you know, the, um, how other colleagues have got on with it and what choices they've made, will be helpful for you and you obviously you know get in touch if you want to ask any more ad advice on that um yeah now in terms of this year's exam i think 
it's been, I mean, it has been really successful. I think, I think it has gone well, and I'm very, very glad, and obviously quite very, very pleased that, that that's been the case, that it's been a good exam that worked well for the pupils sitting it, because that's what, what we want, obviously. Um, teachers who have been teaching the Scottish texts have commented, again, through various routes that I, that I received comments, have commented that they felt they were a fair assessment of what they had been teaching. The... When you're teaching a Scottish text, text analysis, you're really going to go for the central ideas, characters, the key moments, as you would with any other literature that you would be teaching. You don't need to, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to be, you're not going to be asked about some sort of esoteric thing that they only will know if their teacher has been to, you know, has, has very, very, very specialised knowledge. That wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair. So um, it's going to be mainstream stuff that they're going to know. And this is indeed what... Uh, what teachers felt and what having having had a look at the paper i'm just looking at the kind of things that came up in the as the final question uh, so we had things like sunset song and higher was the the character of chris uh, in the cheviot it was the theme of change um, national five cone gatherers was the character of callum higher cone gatherers was the complexity of the character of jura you know how far is he evil how far is he deserving of sympathy i mean and you're, you're not going to teach these texts without teaching those elements are you i mean the mckay I think in higher was the theme of loss. Now, you're not going to teach McKay's poetry without going into the theme of loss. That is central. So these are the kind of areas that you would expect to come up. You'd have no fear that it'll be something that you, if you've taught it thoroughly and they've learned it really well, then it will be things that they know. It, can be, you know, it wouldn't be fair to, to expect them to, to, to be able to, to grasp anything else. Um, and the... Uh, well, the other thing that, that Mark has felt was that this provided them, without having to worry about the structure of what they were writing, without having to worry about structuring an essay, which obviously is a very valuable skill in another way, but they were able to show their knowledge and understanding of the text because of the, the structure of the, the textual analysis. It's specific questions. They can bullet point their answers, that they were able to focus on the reading skills, part of it, the reading aspects of it, and that, that worked very well. The enthusiasm I've mentioned, uh, poetry was the most popular genre, okay? Um, that's perhaps not a surprise to you, but, but all genres were chosen, you know? Uh, the big hitters, the really popular ones, were in both National Five and Higher, were Duffy and McCaig. They were the two that uh, were, you know, over the, over the, nationally, were very, very, very popular. Now, that just means they were the ones that pupils chose on the day. It doesn't necessarily mean they were the only ones they studied, but certainly in terms of what they chose on the day, um, they were the big ones. I think National Five, certainly last year, uh, the other ones were Morgan and uh, Sailmaker. And for Hire, this year, the other um, well, Cone Gatherers was in there as a very popular choice. And a little bit behind uh, was Men Should Weep. And I'm really glad about that because that does mean across, the, you know, we've got something representing all the different genres there as being popular, including drama, which I know that, um, you know, was, was the area that there were, there were some comments. Of, uh, initially, people were concerned about the, about the range of drama, but actually all three plays re you know, represent a, a really, um, you know, a... A rich, a rich range of, of, of texts there. So, um, yes, yeah, so they were the most popular, but all the texts were chosen by someone. Okay, there was no texts that were completely neglected. Um, some were very, very popular. Some were popular in certain areas. So Ian Crichton Smith, I would say, wasn't hugely chosen, but was very popular in certain parts of the country, and that's absolutely fine as well. And I would say that overall, you know, people sometimes ask. Um, isn't it a lot easier to do well in one such and such a writer rather than such and such other writer because, you know, this one's obviously easier or whatever. But in fact, it didn't work out like that. In fact, the, the, the marks across, looking across the, you know, how people did statistically across all the, the texts, the, um, they were very similar. They were very similar. I think that, so I'm just looking at the time. Um, right. And pupils were obviously very well prepared but for this, as I've said. Now, I realise, I, having said I'm not going to overrun, it is, it is um, we're, we're quite close to the end of my time, so I'll be as quick as I can, okay? In terms of the crossovers then, the, why do we have them? You know, why have them at all? Because it's two separate courses. I mean, that just really complicates things. And in fact, it's meant to, well, it, there's a couple of reasons why. One is that um, it's an acknowledgement that certain writers and certain texts work particularly well at different levels. 
and I think that you know the, certainly Duffy and McCaig is are both so popular in terms of teaching throughout you know perhaps even further down the school as well um, the cone gatherers is also you know a big hit it was particularly popular at higher I would say um, although it's in at both levels and uh, Crichton Smith you know also short stories are, are, are have other issues I would say because there's quite a lot of material to get through in six short stories and perhaps teachers may feel a little bit cautious because if you're dealing with a novel you've got something which is more sort of a definite coherent whole whereas the short stories fantastic though they are and um, there is perhaps a, a di different sorts of challenges it would depend what suited your your class um, so the reason for having the crossovers then, because they work particularly well at different levels, there are practical issues that many of us face. Many teachers teach bi-level classes. I met somebody who's, who teaches tri-level classes. In fact, that can, that can be too. National four, um, people do National four as well. But there are lots of schools, and it's not just small schools where everyone's in together. Because of timetabling issues and budget constraints and various other reasons, there are lots of teachers who have bi-level classes. And how on earth are you supposed to teach a big chunk of compulsory content to a class if different people in the class have got to do different different writers completely so this was a way of dealing with that those kind of issues you've also got people who might be resitting for various reasons um, and what I would say about the 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 crossovers that well as I've said they are extremely popular now and now why that is I don't know and uh, you know probably isn't time just now to to wonder why particularly I mean it could be that um, you know just people are very familiar with them. I think that it's possible, this is the first couple of years of the qualifications, I think a lot of teachers will be completely understandably teaching stuff they feel comfortable with and teaching stuff they've taught many times before. Perhaps people will you know, branch out a bit more as the years go on, uh, in that, that could be, um, you know, and more and more materials um, uh, you know, appear. Obviously, some fantastic <coughs> textbooks out there. You'll have noticed, uh, but oh, there's lots of there's lots of materials appearing now, and people are sharing things with one another as well. So, you know, perhaps confidence will grow, and people will try new things. Who knows? Right, teaching the crossovers very very quickly. I make it actually about what time? I make it half two. Is that not the time? David, is it five minutes? Five minutes to go. Right. Okay. Very very quickly, because I don't want to delay. Um, teaching the crossovers. Right. It's the same as teaching other things, okay? Depends on what your class needs. So if you have got, for example, I mean, I don't think people teaching, say, um, a fourth year class, a fourth year National Five class who are doing really well, right? I don't think we hold ourselves back and think, oh, I better not go there because that's kind of more higher material. I don't think we do that. I think we just go with what the class can, can cope with, what they can, you know, um, absorb and enjoy. So I think with a, with a, you know, I, I had a class a couple of years ago with National Five and, the, and it was very much that. It was, they were sort of racing ahead and they were loving it and they were, well, I mean, they were loving the poetry. I don't mean particularly my teaching of it. They were loving the poetry um, and uh, they got on really well with that and lots of group work and lots of independent study and all that kind of thing. Now I'm teaching a very different sort of class this year. Um, but they're still, you know, still making a really good effort with it. But it's a different sort of approach I have. And of course, we adapt our, what we do in order to, 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 to fit the, the pupils, of course we do. Um, you focus on the main things. For the shorter text, the thing that we have to do, which is perhaps slightly different, is we have to work on links between the poems or between the short stories for that final question. For the longer texts, we would work on links within them, uh, as you would normally do, for that final question as well. Now, I want to say something about the final question, so let me just uh, move on quite quickly. Progression and differentiation. Now, normally you would expect these to be in terms of texts, questions, and outcome. With the crossovers, you obviously it's the same text, but there will still be differences in the sort of questions. Now, what you've got on your final page of this handout, um, which I won't go through, is uh, actually it's taken from this year's exam, from the National Five and from the Higher, the McCaig questions and the Ian Crichton Smith questions, which coincidentally turned out to be the same text that we were in mother and son it was a different bit from the text in uh, in visiting our uh, it was, you know, we didn't plan this uh, but we didn't plan not to have it so either so I think it's quite an interesting you can see the differentiation in those questions I'll let you have a look at that yourselves but that that's the kind of differentiation which is built into the paper you would expect National 5 to have um, sort of summary type questions maybe you know what's explain what's happening in this poem explain what's happening in this extract describe the right the the character's feeling sort of thing you wouldn't get that so much in higher and um, explain type questions you could get at both levels but higher it would be a different kind of explanation higher the emphasis is very much on analysis 
virtually every question is going to be analysis of something, right? But it's not, again, it's not going to be something, maybe you've not analysed every bit of the text. You can't have done if you're dealing with a novel or a play in that depth. But it will be things they will be able to do if, you, if they know it really well. And we found that this year. People were not thrown by questions, analytic questions, on stage directions, for example, in the plays, or specific use of language. They were able to get it because they knew the text well enough. Um, analysis in National 5, you're going to be dealing with, I mean, the, the general marking pattern for National 5 is uh, one mark for a reference or quotation, one mark for the comment. That's the way they are built up. In higher analysis, it's not like that. Um, you tend to get no marks for the quotation or reference alone. They might be there, but they're not, specifically they're not getting marks. We've got this thing where you've one mark for basic comment and two marks for detailed insightful comment detailed insightful comment and those are the kind of building bricks that the higher answers do tend to be made up of now again uh, uh, you've I, I, i'm not plugging my book because you've got a free copy of it so that's okay that uh, myself and my colleague william Maguire wrote um, i wrote the two bits on mccaig and crichton smith the, the crossovers and um, willie who is a national five expert wrote on um, the on and donovan and on morgan um, which are the, the other parts of the book so you'll see in there the kind of exam answers broken down. OK, so I'll, you can have a look at that. Um, the National Five, the, eight, the final question, I want to say something about this. In, in National Five, it's out of eight marks. You get um, how to mark this, how to make sure, how to prepare our children for it. It's really broken down into lots of little bits. It's not really just eight marks, like a kind of essay where it's fitting somewhere in an assessment grid. You've got two marks for commonality, two marks for how the question relates to the extract itself, and four marks for elsewhere, for comments either on other texts or on other uh, parts of the text. In higher, you have, it's 10 marks, so therefore you've got differentiation right away. Um, of those 10 marks, two for commonality, two for how the question applies to the text, but you're not going to get marks for the quotational reference this time. It's basic comment or more detailed, insightful comment. And six marks for elsewhere. So you've got that differentiation again. They're getting more marks for what's not on the page than they are for what is on the page in this final question. Um, one thing I should mention, actually, this is new. This is complete. This is new. Even if you were a marker this year, this is new. Um, in those final... now. I, Forgive me if I'm going to be very, very sort of specific here if you're not familiar with this, but for those people who are, of the six marks, of that ten marks, three of them, up to now, have been available for quotations and references alone. Okay? Quote, explain, quote, explain, quote, explain. That's the six marks. Now, that was how we marked it at higher. That's not the normal way of marking higher. Normally, you wouldn't get marks for quotations and references alone. After a lot of thought, we decided to do it because we felt they are retrieving information from somewhere else in perhaps a big text, and that deserves credit in itself. And also, we weren't sure how it would go because you know, we don't pre-test examinations in this country. Therefore, until you actually see the statistics, there's an element of speculation how it's going to go. However, we've decided to change this, and this is a message that's going out to schools. It'll be, the, it'll be in a new, uh, you know, a, an update from the SQA, and if you come along to the Understanding Standards events in January, then this will be very much emphasised then as well. Mark has felt, and other colleagues also, but Mark has felt this was too easy for hire, and I think probably they're right, actually. So this is now change. We're now not going to give any marks for quotations or references alone in that six marks. Now, I'm sorry if this is all sounding a little bit kind of your, what on earth is she going on with this arithmetical numbers and things. But if you have done it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and the, uh, the thing is, they didn't need it. The candidates wrote so much. You won't have seen what some of these pupils were writing. Two or three sides of a booklet on this final question. It's amazing what they did. And therefore, it really isn't, wasn't necessary to give them those marks. It's better to reward the insightful comments that people could make, I think, at, at higher level. So that was something where we were listening to markers and learning, if you like, because it's, all, you know, it's, it's the first year of this where we'd be, it would be foolish to suggest there's nothing to improve on or nothing we can learn from it. OK, the one thing I wanted to mention uh, just before I finish is commonality. It was pointed out to me, this is an area where some people uh, still find this slightly problematic. So if you do, email me, but also just very quickly to say, the idea of the commonality part in these, let me just put that back up so it's kind of got a visual, makes, it, makes sense visually, right. OK, the idea of the commonality was initially 
It was, it was meant to make things easier, believe it or not, because it was meant to acknowledge that the pupils might make a general comment linking the question to what they've studied without pinning it to something specific. And it was an opportunity to give them reward this without their having to be, you know, specifically reference particular uh, poem or poems or whatever. So, for example, uh, just to give you an example, and there are examples in, in, the, in the book that you, that you um, have, have been given today. But say, for example, that higher one on McCaig, the theme of loss, what would you expect at higher level for commonality? OK, something like, now obviously there's loads of different ways you could approach this, but say a candidate wrote something like, McCaig emphasises the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the shattering, life-changing effect of loss. One mark. OK? And then maybe something else, like... Um, he uses personal experience and universalizes it so the reader can engage with this and can understand it as a, it's part of being human, second mark. So they haven't actually mentioned any text at all, but they've got the two marks. Okay? Now, if they do mention texts, then that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to get the marks because you know, what we found was it was very nice if you were marking papers and they were very sort of nicely bullet pointed into sections some pupils actually handily labeled things they wrote commonality hooray great that was easy to mark but an awful lot of people didn't and we found ourselves sifting through because it's not fair to them to expect them to answer things in a certain way so we looked for the, the evidence of, a, of that commonality understanding and awarded the marks if we could okay now just over on a little bit um, is anyone to ask anything urgent just now or we'll leave it there at the minute and please feel free to get in touch with me bearing in mind there's lots of other really interesting things coming up is that okay right i'll leave it there then and thank you very much